Right, hello. Um, my name is Andrew Moore. I work for Neil Butcher and Associates and my particular role in the Kenyan ICT Competency Framework for Teachers course was that of facilitator. Uh, my particular job was to uh, empower the stakeholders so that they could develop, uh, they could design, develop and deploy uh, this particular online or hybrid or blended learning course. And so what I want to do in this particular uh, short video is just outline my uh, feelings about what were the strengths, where the challenges lie, and what particular lessons we can take forward uh, in terms of the model and how it can um, impact positively on future professional development courses. Um, my particular role uh, has come about uh, from my work mostly in developing countries where we look at how can we use education technology to enhance and improve uh, what's on offer in terms of education. Um, Alright, so let's get to the KICT CFT course and why I think it's a particular good example of how technology can support learning um, and that is what were its particular strengths. And um, I feel that in comparison to the existing professional development model, which is to bring people to a city for five days, uh, a very intensive course um, where um, they have to master very quickly uh, skills and then go back into their context and deploy them, I feel that this model is vastly superior. And the reason why is because it gives them a longer amount of time, or more amount of more, more time to consolidate the skills so it's not all done in just a five days short intensive course but can actually be done over a longer period for example the KICT CFT runs for 90 notional hours and it runs for about three months and there's plenty of opportunities for discussion for reflection and for the simulation of the skills um, one of the things we picked up from the um, feedback of the pilot was that the participants enjoyed actually having an opportunity to work in a virtual community. Uh, many of these people were normally in remote areas, uh, some of the districts, uh, or counties, uh, out in the uh, far reaches suddenly now had a community, admittedly a virtual one, but a community that they could interact and discuss and reflect on their ideas. Another particular uh, uh, I think I thought was good about this course was that it was competency based so it wasn't trying to just go for theory but was actually um, attempting to uh, instill specific skills and the fact that we uh, even in the assessment we said that it was important that um, we spent 80% of the time mastering skills and only 20% uh, was the exam was uh, allocated to theory um, another a, a good idea uh, from the thing was that how quickly we were able to put up a course. We used open education resources and therefore it was extremely cost effective. Um, we just had to adapt what was already written and make it contextually relevant for a Kenyan environment. And I think uh, this had great cost implications that we could not only do it cheaply, but we could do it quickly. We could get this course up. And a silly thing, but perhaps quite significant was the fact that the teachers stayed in school they didn't spend large amounts of time out of the classroom so they were learning on the job uh, extending their professional development skills uh, in, in that way um, they it didn't we, we didn't have an erosion of um, class time because this could be done in the evenings it could be done in the morning before school or in the taxi going home or whatever so um, we thought that was a particularly good idea. Does this uh, model need refinement? Yes, um, I think we learnt a lot from our first pilot. Um, one thing that is worrying is uh, currently there's a lot of dependence on a person like myself, a consultant, to run the administration of the course. Uh, it runs on a Moodle server uh, and I think we haven't quite got to a point yet where the, um, the administrators are feeling comfortable and happy with, with the, both the technology and the, their role as administrators. Um, we, uh, in the feedback from the first pilot we picked up that despite the fact that we tried to build it for Wi-Fi, um, 
the vast majority of them ended up using data and they incurred costs to them which we hadn't really anticipated um, and therefore perhaps we need an offline version which uh, we now have built using um, another piece of technology which basically mirrors uh, all the static content uh, and eliminates the interactive components sadly but at least it can be done offline so there's they're never dissociated from the, the actual content that they need to uh, um, and another thing that we were worried about in terms of adapting the open education resources we thought in that first round we didn't have enough Kenyan specific content it was very generic and let's face it Kenya is a very unique and exciting place and it needs to reflect the conditions or well, the course needs to reflect the environment in which these people need to work. So uh, that's something we have worked on and tried to improve, but I think it's important going forward that we keep that in mind. It must be contextually relevant. So what is the potential then? We've done all this, good stories, bad stories, um, but it, is there a future for this model? And I would strongly say yes, I would say in terms of offering professional development to teachers, and it doesn't have to be like this one, ICT in education, it could be anything, school management or uh, the role of sports, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's purely a medium, the, this blended learning where we use a Moodle server to deliver the content uh, and we use connectivity so they can learn anywhere, anytime, uh, is, is, seems to work. I think Kenya is in the right place now, up until now we've always been worried about connectivity is there enough and I think we're at that cusp now where actually there is and we need to now exploit it so that we can better prepare the teachers um, there's now talk of training 64,000 teachers but uh, uh, I think people are still a little bit concerned that um, the, the, this particular model can it really address that many? Perhaps not all 64,000, but I think a large chunk of that are amenable to this type of model where we use technology to deliver professional development. I think it's very doable, and um, yeah, we just need to uh, make sure that the particular team who's involved don't feel overburdened. It's not something that's been added on top of what they're already doing, that is actually now worked into their. their um, workflow that um, they feel comfortable that there's something they, that they must do uh, in the pilot we got very much the feeling that this was added on tacked on top and that there were so many competing priorities uh, that uh, it became very protracted and so on so we need to get away from that we need to make see it as a dedicated um, uh, uh, angle in we need to uh, make sure that people feel it's part of what they do and um, I think, uh, I hinted earlier, but I think now is the time when this, the, the, the model's ready and the Kenyans are ready. I was amazed how our first pilot, uh, the, the technology wasn't the issue. There were so many other things, but the technology really was the problem. Um, it was more um, uh, getting their mindsets around a different way of learning, a different way of ensuring that they grow professionally. So yes, the time is now. Give it a go, have a tackle and see if this model can do more. I really believe it can. Okay, that's enough from me. Um, have a debate, have a discussion, and let's see if you need more support for discussion or ideas from me, contact me and let's take it to the next level. Thank you.